What's going on, y'all? WWE superstar Kofi Kingston, a.k.a. Mr. Boom Boom Boom, a.k.a. Mr. Skills All Day, a.k.a. the savior of savages, SOS, a.k.a. the newest compadre, and you're listening to the Wrestling Compadres Slamcast. Wrestling buddies want to be your buddies. Hey, buddy. Buddy. No matter where in the world you are joining us from, we welcome you to the Wrestling Compadre Slamcast right here on Fox Sports. Special episode going up on a Friday. Why? Because WrestleMania is in the books, and we did so much cool stuff at WrestleMania. Talked to so many amazing people. We want to get you the greatest content possible. And with that said, The Miz and Maurice are our special guests today, and they dropped some exclusive stuff about their lives, about John Cena and Nikki Bella. And yeah, they came up short, but that's okay. They're still pretty awesome. Not to use his wordplay, but yeah, they're still pretty awesome. We're at Fox Compadres on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Fox Compadres. I'm Johnny LaQuasto at Jay Quasto. The man to my left, you can find him on Twitter at The Walking Dale. That's because he's Dale Rutledge. Bonjour. Hey, we. Oui. That was just for Maurice, really. Oh, yeah. But hey, what's up? Got, it confused me. <laughs> Don't take much, brother. And No, it does not. And across from me, you can find him on Twitter, at Scott Narver. That's because he's the one and only Scott Narver, the man who popped a beach ball on Monday Night Raw. Uh, Yeah, I'm a beach ball murderer, a beach ball slayer, a beach ball killer. Yeah. I got a ton of monikers going on Twitter. You deleted that beach ball, and I could not be more proud. Darn right. It's sitting right here next to me. They were out of control on Raw. God. I mean, the beach ball, it's almost like gremlins. They keep multiplying every single Raw after Mania. And now Jer- Topical. Jericho has damned us all by putting it over on oh, his freaking promo. So now the next 10 years, well, beach balls. Yeah. These beach balls are going to overtake the cruiserweights. They will. Be beach ball 05 live. <laughs> I thought he was going in the ring for that match. I really did. Mm-hmm. I was, I was There's more and more irritated. people showing up with a beach ball stuffed in their pocket. It's just one dude, probably. It's probably one How's dude with seven, beach 700 in? beach balls. How'd he get him in it there? It seemed like they came from different tiers in the arena. We'll get to it. I had a lot of tears we'll in the to arena, it. too. But <laughs> I just, I'm just i proud of you, the fact that you caught the beach ball, you aggressively popped it, and the guy sitting right behind you goes, Hey, man, hit the beach ball. Oh. <laughs> like he just got deflated like the beach ball did. It was brilliant. <laughs> I had turned to Tom Anstey of Wrestling Memes, and I jokingly said to him, uh, I said, hey, if a beach ball falls in my lap, I'm going to pop it without yes. any show. Like, I'm not going to make a spectacle out of it. I'm just going to delete it. And it happened. A beach ball fell in my lap. True to your word. <laughs> and, and now you have something for your mantle. And I just I didn't want to stand up and make – I'm not the show. I am not the show. That's the whole point. We are not the show. It's fun to be involved in the show. Mm-hmm. But, no, I'm watching Neville. And Mustafa Ali, who I've not seen wrestle before. So I'm curious. I want to watch this. So, no, I'm, I'm not watching. But these beach balls are distracting me. Yeah, if he, was, if he was king of the beach balls, it would be a different story. But yeah. it really was just distracting from what was a really freaking awesome match. Yeah. So, yeah, I didn't have any of it. And if he was the king of the beach balls, he'd probably be wrestling like barefoot in some trunks. <laughs> And it wouldn't be the best it. gimmick, to be honest. No, God, probably not. Roman Reigns next week should come out with beach balls. <laughs> a beach ball launcher like they do the t-shirts. This yeah. is my beach ball I now. I love beach balls. And if you love beach balls, you love me. <laughs> oh, no. But I don't what care if you don't do? like beach balls because I'm going to keep playing with my beach balls. <laughs> he could have Samoan makeup on, but it would all be like suntan lotion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> SPF 50. <laughs> Speaking of Roman Reigns, That's his finisher. he said five words on Monday Night Raw after about eight minutes of just relentless oh my. booing and hissing and vitriol geared towards him. Old chance, new chance, and f bombs. Yes. yes, that was a new sign of what the level of hatred is for Roman Reigns. That was impressive for. 20,000 people to come together and go, you know, we don't care if this is on live television. We're going to drop some F-bombs on you. It it was actually pretty fun because, I mean, they had to know that was coming. Unlike 72 beach balls, they had to know that the heat was coming. And I didn't mind the creativity at that point because – and then every time he went to take the mic to his mouth – it was Vicky Guerrero is the last time that I've seen somebody just have instant heat like that. But I don't even think she can touch the 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 level of volume that was aimed at Roman. Even John Cena, when he was at his most hated, he still had a good chunk of fans that were cheering for him. So the boos weren't that loud. 
I have never I, I couldn't tell you the last time I remember someone being booed this loudly on a show. Vince McMahon and the heyday of the Attitude Era uh, would get booed this loudly, I feel. But not for that long of a period of time. Right. And the NWO. I, those are the two that I can think of in my lifetime. I mean, I'm sure there's that stuff in the 70s. And, you know, you go to those shows with no cameras and it's like people are going to get stabbed. Mm -hmm. That stuff was crazy. But, I mean, this is just pure hate. This is an amazing progression of a character that has not changed his stripes yeah. and has just been him and garnering more and more hate from hardcore fans to casual fans and being the guy to take the undertaker out mm. and knowing that that's going to be the case and that he's going to carry that with him forever. There was no build to this. There was no reward in him taking him out. So it's just going to garner hatred. And it did. Well, you mentioned Vince McMahon. You mentioned the NWO. They were flat out heels. So they were getting booed. Roman Reigns. What the hell is he? Is he, is he a heel based off of just crowd reaction? That's the thing. He's not the stereotypical baby face slash heel that people want that's cut and dry. And I think that's maybe part of the things that pisses people off. Yeah, but I think that's kind of the fun of, of today, too, is that they are kind of letting characters be that. Just like Triple H said, if 70% of the crowd thinks that he's a heel, then he's a heel to 70% of the crowd. Mm -hmm. If 30% of the people love him and want to buy his stuff and will do everything Roman Reignsy. Then great, he's that too. I mean, that's the nice thing about not having to be these sort of caricatures anymore. Is that uh, we we have lots of people that we know that some <laughs> some of us like them, some of us don't. Mm -hmm. It feels more real life in that way, and I I dig that they let it just live and breathe. And you know, they try different iterations inside of that. But it's it's a, it's an interesting time, but especially for Roman Reigns, good on him for taking this. Too. I mean, for those of you who weren't in Orlando tonight for Raw, I can't even explain. It just wouldn't stop, and honestly. If he wouldn't have said a word, I think it would have continued for 15 minutes, 18 minutes, 20 minutes. But he won a lot of people over, I think, when he just said, this is my yard now. Mic drop out. There was a, a good smattering of applause after that. And those are those hardcore haters, yeah. I believe. I think those are the same guys that hate John Cena and that hated Roman Reigns before. They were booing Goldberg. Who do nothing but criticize creative. They're, they're like their home. They're, uh, they're the... the Armchair bookers. Right, because that was cool now, because that's yeah. what they wanted from him the whole time. So no matter what, it is like, as Dale says, as Triple H said, there will always be a percentage that will be anti-establishment. Mm -hmm. And I fully believe that if you're going to categorize Roman Reigns, he is, since the win over Undertaker at WrestleMania and being the guy to put Undertaker away, Roman Reigns is a heel. Yeah, especially with the reaction he's getting. I mean... It was incredible to see, and there, this Raw had... It was incredible to participate yeah. in, because that was a Raw after Mania fun thing to do. Yeah. That was so fun to yell at someone yeah. and throw hate on them. Uh. And we just kept looking at each other, and I couldn't help but giggle every single time he tried to speak, and the booze got so deafening that he couldn't speak. I kept looking over at you guys. I'm like, this is really happening. <laughs> That's what wrestling should be. It should be... Someone has a purpose and they want to speak. Well, no, I don't want to let you. Yeah. I'm going to scream at your face. Yeah. I'm going to scream at your dumb face and call you out for dumb things. I'm it, so it, involved. It is very old school, like 70s and 80s, the way this crowd is reacting to him. It's supposed to be. It's melodrama. Like, that melodrama is back. We're not being dictated to what's supposed to happen. We got to share in that moment. Roman Reigns was dictating it. But we got to participate in it. Mm -hmm. Well, Roman Reigns, uh, Monday Night Raw may not have a dictator, like you mentioned, but there is a new general manager. And no, it's not Teddy Long. But man, that was a great moment. But it's My a 2017 Hall of Famer. Yeah. Holla, holla, holla. My bad. Oh, <laughs> just Teddy Long, you are everything, and we love you. Come was, on the show. That was super funny. But I love Vince getting mad at him. I loved it. He was very spry. He looked younger than the last yeah. time we saw him. He's hopping around, dancing. Looked great. I love that Vince was like, I don't, I don't really know what the confusion was here, but it's not you. <laughs> like, yeah. It was just Vince was, was pretty great tonight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. on top of everything, yes, we get Vince McMahon back. And then also getting so mad, having to relay the news about, you know, Mick isn't here. And now Stephanie's been hurt. And him playing into it, too. Like, we're getting two characters in the night of playing into, but wait, Stephanie's hurt. Hooray, the crowd cheers. How can you do this? You're monsters. <laughs> Hooray. And just 
asking us to do it more. Yeah. I miss this. This is what I used to love about wrestling. And it was happening tonight in, in droves. Mm. I wonder if there has been, I mean, because this was such a satisfying WrestleMania for me as well. Mm -hmm. I wonder if there was a, a backstage attitude adjustment, if you will, about Whoa. presenting the business a little more old school. Because there was a good mix. WrestleMania had everything. It mm -hmm. had, had right. the different kinds of matches, and, and a lot of that was arguably for the older crowd. And NXT is essentially very old school. It's, uh -huh. it's, it's Dusty Rhodes, what he's done for years. It's yeah. kind of the, the game plan there and the blueprint. Uh, so we do have a new Raw GM, and wow, did he knock it out of the park. Kurt Angle, oh, welcome back. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It was the old Kurt Angle, too. Yes. It was, it was nice to see him. And, Scotty, I know you might not want to hear this, but his segment with Enzo and Cass was perfect. And he had another it segment was. later on in the show. He was two for two, and it's amazing because the last couple of years, and I mentioned on the show before, I was nervous about Kurt Angle being GM. Because over his last couple of years in TNA, he didn't show any personality. He was running through the motions, or what's it called, going through the motions. And I was like, does he have his sense of humor left? And it turns out, yeah, he does. I think, I think Scotty would like that segment because finally someone agreed with Scotty. That's not how you spell soft. No. <laughs> nope. That's completely incorrect <laughs> for people that claim people can't be taught. Well, that's the problem. They can't be taught. Mm -hmm. They're just doing lots of things wrong. Idiots. <laughs> that I love that though. That was the best way to introduce him back to a crowd that maybe a lot of people don't know. I mean, he's been gone a long time. Mm -hmm. About a decade. So he was he, he he's been in WWE less time than he was other places. Like mm -hmm. in, in Impact, like he was there longer for his uh than his entire tenure of WWE. Absolutely, yeah. Yes, he was. He didn't leave on great terms. He left to get help and then about a month later he signed with Impact and he admitted that wasn't really the right professional decision, but you know, time heals all wounds, and Kurt's, you know, clean and sober and just doing great. And just watching those segments on Raw, it's really exciting to see what's going to happen. Will he butt heads with Stephanie? Will she even be back after a while? Or what's going to happen every single week? He looked like he was having a good time, and that's the most important thing. Yeah. Is he really looked like he was enjoying it. And yeah, so did Mick Foley in the beginning. Right, but also <laughs> Kurt Angle's the kind of GM that could also kick your ass, and Mick Foley's not really at that point anymore. Oh, I think Mick could still whoop some ass. Yeah, I still wouldn't mess with him. <laughs> Just or, or his socks. No. But it's always great. I always love seeing legends and seeing older characters being mixed in with new and different characters. Mm -hmm. That's the best. Because it helps them, too, because then they can learn from the older guys. Because, yeah, the business is different now. But mm -hmm. personality-wise, that doesn't change. Mm -hmm. You need to be a big character, yeah. and you need guys in there that can pull that off, that you can learn from, and even just have conversations off camera with. Mm -hmm. If there's nobody to ask advice, you do it the way you think you should do it, and then, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I love the mix with the old and the new, too. It's incredible. He's been gone a decade, and another team that's been gone almost that long is, well, we're calling them the Hardy Boys. <laughs> uh, we like to call them Broken Matt and Brother Nero, and as did the crowd tonight with all the different chants. But they defended their titles against Gallows and Anderson. So, yeah, now we have number one, number one contenders. We have Sheamus and Cesaro. They defeated Enzo and Cass. And so now we have the Hardy Boys. But, Scotty, on Raw After Talk, we did get glimpses of them mm -hmm. as broken, correct? Yeah, we, we, we are seeing uh, little elements from the behind the scenes of WrestleMania, from Raw Talk. Like, we're getting glimpses of Broken Matt. He is obviously saying this popular phrases. Yeah, he's the verbiage is there. And wonderful. He said deleted. Yep, and he, he will gesture. He doesn't do it for a long period of time, but these are being sprinkled in because, you know, as Dale points out to me, as I incessantly talk about the Hardys, he's saying, you know, it's, it is for a new audience. It is for a wider audience that haven't seen him forever. So until they flat out have promo time on the show to talk about story, they're not going to go overboard with it because it needs to be introduced. Yeah, it's interesting that, you know, obviously they weren't going to say anything at Mania, but to go into Raw for three hours and still not talk, I, I have to think that they are either figuring out what they're going to do mm -hmm. or figuring out how to sort of rebirth yeah. this brother Nero and broken Matt. I don't, I don't, they can tell that I mean, story again because there's plenty of people yeah, that have no idea. They yeah. could retell the story, and of course, the, we all know how great the WWE production team and editing is i mean granted matt and jeff they did a great job as it went along their story but if they want to retell it they certainly can 
I, I just don't know how wacky they're going to get. Because let's be honest, they got crazy with the stuff they were doing to TNA. That's true. I mean, you wouldn't want to do anything super crazy like that. Because that would be really weird in front of a huge audience where one can summon worms that are on the ring mat or cockroaches <laughs> maggots. or maggots. That'd be super weird. And then having a, a house burned down with the ashes of a long lost sister and smeared over your face to Gurner Powers and have a compound fight yeah. where, you know, you get the new day there and then there's thousands of people in G Man. That'd be weird. Like you wouldn't want to go crazy and like there's that no on WWE need, television. There's no room for that kind no. of weirdness. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Not enough time on TV. Wait a second, for guys, it. that all happened. Why'd I turn into Tim the Toolman Taylor all the time? The Undertaker went into the ramp. Someone check Orlando. Go oh to the God. Camping World Arena and just see if he's there. Have they seen him? <laughs> he just sunk in. That's wow. why the ramp was so steep. You he, gotta go six feet under. He's down there playing chess with Sister Abigail. <laughs> yeah, and Hornswoggle. <laughs> swoggle. swoggle. <laughs> Sorry, Swoggle. Whatever. Either way, Hardy Boys, I mean... I, it's exciting to have them back, and I just you know can't wait to see where it goes because Matt is kind of still speaking with the accent, and he said, we deleted Gallows and Anderson. So they're allowing him some freedom there. The question is maybe there's still a legality issue with Anthem or something. But all of that is off air, technically. That's all, that's all network stuff. Ooh. Right. So Yeah, uh, that's probably what it is. I wonder if there's some kind of TV prohibiting thing. I, I, I don't know. We can only guess because it's only been two days, but – Whatever it is, I'm sure they'll sort it out. But uh, I, I really wish they would just drop the boys part. It seems kind of silly. It's weird. Yeah, the, the Hardys. The Hardys. We get it. We we remember. <laughs> you know, They're older to, now. B O Z Y or B O Y Z is uh, even that shows I its mean, age. Yeah. But, yeah. Boys to men should now just be well, middle age older men. Ah. And they were the Dudleys when they came back. Were they still the Dudley boys? Am I mistaken I, on that? I don't remember them saying Dudley boys. Yeah. But so they could have. I don't remember. Dudleys. Well, speaking of tag teams, we had a debut tonight, and that's the top guys, the Revival. They debut. They go hard. They defeat the New Day. They go hard, no flips, just fists. And the New Day, uh, they're not doing a whole lot as of late as far as in the win column. But, hey, they had a long title run. They're, they're, you know, they're helping out the Revival there. And uh, I thought this was a really good call-up. Didn't see it coming. But the Revival can immediately cause a lot of rifts in the tag team division. No flips. Nope. Just riffs. Just riffs. Well, when was the last time New Day wrestled before that? Oh, boy. I Chihuahua. Since they lost, I mean, since they broke the, they lost to Cesaro and Sheamus, right? And right. I don't, maybe a match or two, but I don't remember anything significant. Yeah, perhaps a number one contendership here and there. Yeah. But clearly they didn't win those, so they've been on the shelf for a while. And now the revival, uh, we'll see what the aftermath is, but they Injured Kofi's knee. I mean, they were right. Took him out or whatever you want to say. I right. don't know if that was just for tonight. I but. mean, this could be a, a few that's actually going to brew to give New Day something to do and it'll allow everyone to see what the revival is all about because they're very different than the other, other tag teams in WWE. Right? I'm curious to see how this goes because I, I feel like the revival is somebody that could get lost on the main roster if, if people don't get behind them. True. Uh, tonight is. Obviously, a great start for any team, they but they're going to be behind anybody that comes up from NXT. Initially, speaking. yeah, yeah. So, so I, I'm I'm very curious how this goes. I love the revival, so it, the top guys all the way for me. But I, I don't know. We'll they, see. Right. They got great packaging. They got a great look. They got a great song that people are not going to get bored with. That song coming. I love in. that song. And on top of that, uh, it's they don't they aren't bogged down with a silly gimmick, a silly one note gimmick like Adam Rose. Good performer, but after that one note of like, hey, you know. It worked. They thought the one note would work on the main roster. It just didn't. It just didn't. And if it doesn't progress, if it's not given anything to, but that's not these guys. It's just they come out and they fight and they have a kick-ass song and that's it. So that's going to work for a while. I will say this. They've gotten pretty good on the mic themselves. So when they get the chance to start talking, they're going to impress some people too. Yeah. So technically we have two new tag teams in the Hardys and Revival. So And we have a new Emma. A new old Emma. Yes, Emmalina is on a photo shoot on the beach still, but Emma <laughs> with longest her, shoot ever with her cop shades. She shows up tonight and she's back to being good old Emma. She didn't get to do a lot in that match. I thought she was going to own that match a little more mm -hmm. than you know for being gone so long. But just coming out and like 
getting on the announcer table and dropping her outfit into the laps of the three dudes. <laughs> I thought that was such a great way to come back and just be like, look, bitch, I'm back. I've been mm-hmm. waiting way too long with this Emelina bullshit. <laughs> yeah, that's great attitude and uh-huh. great character that she has got and she owns. And that was fairly new. I mean, you know, she didn't get to live in that character that long before the injury either. Mm-hmm. So it, it still feels fresh to me. Because she was hanging with Charlotte, if I'm not mistaken, right? Right before uh, it no, was she, Dana Brooks' it spot? It was Dana. Yeah, her and her were – Dana and, and uh, Emma were, were kind of – Okay, they were the buddy buddies. 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 Yeah. Were. So she was rising up real fast, and then, yeah, that injury took her out. But she's going to take that spot again real quick. She's I think so. I mean, they, in no time. Of course, they lost a the six-man tag, and then Charlotte got cocked Man. with Nia Jackson. Six woman tag. Six woman tag. And Nia Jax uh, pretty much squashed Charlotte. So this, the Raw Women's Division is a little confusing. Charlotte's been Why is it confusing? tapping out and losing quite a bit lately. Yeah. I mean, I mean she's, she's the most successful of those, really, when you count the title runs, I mm-hmm. suppose. But they, they flip-flap that thing quite a bit. But uh, it's interesting that Charlotte keeps kind of – I guess she's just helping put everybody over. She's poking yeah. the bear. Because she's the best of the women on, right now, to me at least, on the mic and in the ring. I think she's a complete package. And uh, we, were, we were talking tonight. Mm-hmm. Sasha is, is right there uh, at her heels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't find the women's division on Raw confusing. I think they're establishing uh, the pecking order again now. We've got uh, Nia Jax on her own, mm-hmm. not siding with anybody. She's and not, not like being, those girls. And not being a face and not being a heel. And just taking Charlotte out. And then we've got Bailey dealing with her stuff. And then we've got Emma back in the mix. So it's just they're they're all finding a place again now. I mean, we're only four weeks. We're less than four weeks away, technically, from uh, the next pay-per-view for Raw. The right. most anticipated pay-per-view after WrestleMania. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is very correct. So I could see uh, that right there alone being a build for Nia and Charlotte at that pay-per-view. Could be. Mm-hmm. But I'm glad to see Emma back and Dana Brooke, you know, after she broke off from Charlotte, we, we didn't really hear much because it was all mania build. She's she's going to be a strong competitor, too. I, I like I'm curious to see how they do as a uh, face. Dana mm-hmm. definitely will. Well, moving on, Brock Lesnar and Brown Strowman. Wow. wow. They have a bit of a stare down as Lesnar's feeling good about himself. Paul Heyman decides to call out Roman Reigns because he is the two in 23 and two. But Brown ain't having it. What can Brown do for you? Well, he will just stare you down and then back away. He so, shoved him. Huh? He shoved Brock. I thought that was the dumbest thing on earth. He did shove him a little bit. It's true. Because uh, not that like it's it was a it was dumb on Braun because uh, Brock when that guy gets angry, it's it's a blink of an eye and then Brock's all over you. Yeah. And I didn't know what was gonna happen. That got me excited. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh-huh. Brock, uh, wait, he threw down that title and said, "Come on." It's me. I think that the the rain thing is is the longer play here. But for him to go ahead and say like we got to address this, the twenty three and two, the two have to go against each other. I I would think that you would wait for SummerSlam or something for uh, something of that for caliber. Sure. Yeah. So is is Braun first? <sighs> I, I don't I don't know. It makes I don't know you where wonder. They're going. If it's same thing earlier. If Braun's just gonna be there to be scary, but not win. I think Braun's a competitor. You got to start testing him, putting him in these matches. You know, yep. if if he is main event caliber. You know, he had the great match with Big Show a few weeks back. But why not throw him in there for payback? See if he can hang with Lesnar. And then down the line, that 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 is the the beginning of the video package with Heyman calling out Roman Reigns mm-hmm. and Reigns doing whatever he's going on to tear. And then they collide at a SummerSlam or a Survivor Series, something big. This yard is his yard. <laughs> he uh, hates a beach ball. <laughs> it does not belong to Roman. <laughs> oh, dear. Yep. You're welcome. Yeah. Now, Chris Jericho, he lost the U.S. title to Kevin Owens. But then he gets beat up tonight by Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe. Uh-oh, Seth Rollins doesn't have a partner in the main event tag match. But Kurt Angle says, look, I'll do my best to find a partner. Well, who do you think it is? Uh-oh. I don't know. Is the dude that you called the Demon King for like three weeks before he got injured? Kane? No. Not the Demon. That's the The damn Demon. demon. That's the damn Demon. Oh, the Demon King. King. The Demon King. And that'd be Finn Balor with the Balor Club jacket, the Balor Club decal. He's so badass. And winning with the coup de grace. What a. (laughs) Just to cap off an incredible Monday Night Raw. I love Finn Balor, but I'm not crazy about that finisher. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I never liked the coup de gras. I don't get it. I really don't. It's understand like I'm it. gonna step on you, and no, I'm not. 
<laughs> I don't yeah. know. It just is a hard one to pull off for me. But anyway, right in the bread basket. You can't breathe. Three count. Yeah, gotcha. It's weird. Got you in your fat tummy. <laughs> Yeah, I, I should have done it to Jericho in his beach ball mania. Uh, Jericho, oh, Jericho, on, you're the man. stupid idiot. What a stupid uh. idiot! You know what happens to people who bring up beach ball mania? <laughs> yes, they take a break for a little while, probably. Pop the beach balls, man. <laughs> they do Fozzie concerts. <laughs> That's exactly what they do. Yeah, I mean, everybody knew Finn was coming. They were asking for it during. I'm surprised Heyman didn't say something because he definitely mm-hmm. took a pause to like, okay, get it out, chant for Balor, say mm-hmm. what you want. Sure. But then he didn't address it. But um, I don't know where else you would have put Balor this evening. But um, this was another part where the crowd kind of irritated me is that they started doing the wave. We were talking about this earlier. So dumb. Last year, Wade Barrett's last match, another personal favorite of mine. The wave happens in his match. And then we never see Wade Barrett again. And then tonight, Finn Balor comes back with guys that the crowd normally cares about. Finn Balor, Seth yeah. Rollins, Kevin Owens. Of all Kevin the matches Owens. to choose to do the wave, I don't understand. The you main had, event? You had two hours and 45 minutes before the damn main event to Just do that. Sit the hell down. With your stupid beach balls and your stupid waves. Do Come it during on, a Orlando. commercial. If you're bored during a commercial, then I understand. Do it during main event. <laughs> or superstars. We're watching Titus O'Neil and Curtis Axel. They want that attention. Yeah. Right. But I just I just didn't get it. But anyway, so with Finn Balor back, do you think he immediately tries to go after Brock Lesnar, or is he gonna just go a different path? No, I, I mean I look at that those four competitors in the U.S. title mix. Like I think it's I think it's Braun is going after Brock Lesnar 100. percent I don't think he's he's anywhere near that. If I am Finn Balor and I had a match for the Universal Championship and I get hurt in it, I'm not fighting Brock Lesnar after right. my big. Oh, Riku. no. There's no way I'm doing that. No way. Yeah. We, so whoever takes that off Brock, then I'll fight that guy. I think they would protect him for that reason anyways. Yeah. They don't want to put Finn Balor in that kind of situation to get hurt. Mm-hmm. So, uh, But those are arguably their four now guys. I mean, you can say Braun is for now, but those four guys we were just talking about, that is – the universal champions of of today and already. Yeah, and Finn mm-hmm. Balor obviously has a history with Kevin Owens, a history with Samoa Joe, so he could go a number of ways. But these additions to Raw obviously are going to make the show better. Now, apparently, we have a, some kind of shakeup next week. <laughs> They're calling it the shakeup. We don't know what that <laughs> means exactly. I'm well, hoping it means that we get some challenges, some things of like, oh, okay, well. This SmackDown person will face this Raw person, and whoever wins this bout, then we get to take two oh, of your guys. I or... thought you meant the Titus O'Neil carry a keg contest that he didn't Oh, know. God. That, NXT wasn't that NXT? Did. Yeah. Uh-uh, no, we will never see that again. Okay. Um, I hope. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's some kind of – but maybe they, the draft was too recent. They don't want to do another draft. Yeah. I think it's just to, to change a couple of key players for storyline's sake and to avoid uh, just overdone storylines. I told you, AJ Styles wearing red and blue. That was a sign Ooh. of something, and here we are in a shakeup. And we've got mm. – we would have a full club at that point. Ooh. Wow. You know? Maybe trades would have to go down. Well, speaking of SmackDown, though, here's the thing. We are going to do some predictions because right now we're recording this before SmackDown actually hits the air. you got to believe there's going to be maybe a debut, maybe a return, some surprises. So do you guys have anyone in your brain, Dalio, who do you think might show up on SmackDown as a big surprise? Nakamura. Oof. Wow. 100%. 100%. 100%. Okay. He he said goodbye to that NXT crowd. I can tell you one thing. I, I know a goodbye when I see it. Nakamura said goodbye to NXT. Okay. Well, how about maybe a return? Who would you say? Um, do, Should we go to Scotty? Because I'm going to take all the good ones. <laughs> no, no, no. You go right ahead. <laughs> I think it's time for Shelton Benjamin to come. I agree. That's That was my choice. Yeah. I think that they, they had a very unfortunate situation with him. They made a promo package, and then he hurt himself, and... He was always a guy that could go. Mm-hmm. I would love to see him back. Incredible athlete, yeah. Yeah. So, so, Scotty, who do you see entering, say, the main event picture next, going after Randy Orton? And also, do you have any debuts or maybe returns? Oh, easily the person going after uh, Randy Orton is the person that I remembered before we started recording, and in this very moment, I have forgotten. So that will easily come back to me in no time. <laughs> so Oscar's going to come up from NXT. That's what I'd say. Even with the title. Yeah, that's what Kevin Owens did. I think the, it'll be yeah. that again. I think it'll be she'll be playing double uh, duty. Double duty, and that's a great thing. That needs to get more eyes on NXT. NXT, I think, is really suffering the brunt right now, as Johnny is for Mr. Sandman. 
Uh, it's two in the morning. We're doing our best here right now. <laughs> um, Scotty and I excel at nighttime. Yeah, we're night I owls. usually excel at nighttime, but not when I'm on three hours of sleep. Four days in a row. Four days in a row. Mm. Uh, I would like to see I, – look, I don't know which way Randy Orton's going to go, face or heel, but I think it's time for The Miz to take that step up and start going after the, yes. the big title. Why yes. not? He's got Maurice by his side. She – is obviously not going to be an active ring participant. So, boom, what else could you ask for for everything they've been doing? Go yeah, after why? the main title. Go after that WWE title, man. It's it's well overdue for him. He yeah. should have already done, did that. That's who that person was. I forgot, by the way. Ah! <laughs> you you got to believe Baron Corbin might be doing the same thing. As no, well. you don't lose for the IC and then move up to the main title. That just He needs, he needs so to do something else. You lose the IC title, then you fight for the... <laughs> Yeah. That's how apparently you that is a trajectory. I also yeah. would like to say DIY should move up. If they've got Revival Ooh. moving up, it's time for DIY as well. Yeah, they, that would be fantastic. Also, I mean, we got to get Luke Harper doing something. we got to get him involved. That's that's without question. I mean, it's same thing as we were talking about with the other people. Just There's WrestleMania storyline happening. If he's not on the cards for a five-hour show with everybody and everything, he's going to be in the mix real quick here. And Orton is a face. They're planning on him being the face of SmackDown Live and – I think what's really interesting that you're Mike okay, Dale. Sorry, I just a little gassy from the Orton mention. Got it. Too many cockroaches. Sure. Well, what I find really interesting is so I've I've been loving SmackDown Live forever. I think that's the A show. Raw tonight put a lot of players uh, in the spotlight and made it the A show. They put they put together a fantastic show tonight. We haven't seen SmackDown Live yet, but it's going to be hard to beat that show. And mm-hmm. it's going to be hard to beat in the weeks coming up unless there's some major, major shakeups and some major feuds going on. There are I think major they shakeups. <laughs> that is literally on the card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shake up. It's, it's going to be tough. And I, I hope the effort is not lost in SmackDown Live because of it. Very true. So let's get to our special guests of this episode. Like we mentioned, we got it's to two hang in the out morning. We can't ask them to come here. No, no. It's already pre-recorded. Oh, thank God. Shh. Uh, they were fantastic. What's great about this, I don't know if you guys noticed, when Radio Row ended, everyone gets kind of whisked away to, like, somewhere else. Who stayed to talk to people? We Miz did. and Maurice. And oh, we did, too. Yeah. But no one wanted to talk to us. <laughs> but Miz and Maurice, a good 15 minutes after Radio Row was done, they're still talking to some other media members. Cause like, and Miz always talks about going the extra mile but never getting the credit for it. There's some truth to that. They didn't have to still sit there and talk to the media but they did. They, they're just all about it. And they talked to us a lot longer than they were supposed to. They just kept going. Yeah, I loved it. And these two, uh, you can feel the passion off of both of them. I mean, Miz especially. But for a guy who, ha- he's been in it for a minute now. Yes, I mean, he has. I, he could be over it easily. Mm-hmm. And you, the passion just exudes out of that dude. And he is just so happy to talk shop. Like, he likes to make fun of people, especially Johnny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but <great>. Loved <laughs> it. Loved it. He, which is, you know, giving it back and forth. It was fantastic. Yeah, but I just, I just love his love for the business. I can't believe in all of my wrestling fandom and my podcasting career and all of this, I hated The Miz. I have hated The Miz. Really? He's doing a good job. Yeah, well, no, it's it's that, like, I hate you, Legit. get off my TV hate. Oh, like uh-huh. Roman Reigns kind of hate. Yeah, that other people have for him. Yeah. I don't feel that way about Roman, sure. but I felt that way about Miz. And it has changed. It changed over the ca- past couple of years. It's like, all right. <laughs> now you're like, get here. off my computer screen. <laughs> uh, but now it's, uh, since that, that talk and smack, that it has been a game changer. Absolutely. And I, it, he is such a fascinating guy. When he talks to you one on one, because he has now unlocked this other side of himself that you can't tell which is which. You can't tell which is Mike Mizanin and which one is the Miz that you're really talking to because it's probably a pretty good blend at this point. Well, yeah. But it also speaks to a bigger issue in society and sports in general. We always want to put a label on someone early in their career, and that label unfortunately sticks with them. So, yeah, Miz was an MTV douche when he first joined the wwe and he was treated as such but over the past decade the guy has worked his tail off relentlessly he does all the appearances they ask him to and he's turned into a pretty you know formidable like to where you don't even i I don't think mtv anymore i look at the miz i'm like this dude is going every single week and yeah i do hate him and he's doing a great job 
but he still has that label to where like people look at him like, oh God, what are you doing? It's like, no man, he's one of the best there is right now, and I think it's about time he gets credit for it. It always surprised me how much hate people gave him just for having a past. Like, yeah, because he like, had well, a like dream. no one has skeletons. Not like being on MTV was a bad thing. No, it was. It was actually that season of the Real World was before they got all like funky and mm-hmm. sexy weird. I want to say it was Real World 4, like London, no, right? No, completely wrong. It was, it was Real York. World 10 <laughs> New York. Uh, when they went back to New York. Yeah, it's right, the maze. Hello. <laughs> Hello, I'm the maze. What Whatever. are you Mis- doing? Mis- Is that a cup of haters? <laughs> um, but he, he just, yeah, like you're saying, had that follow him for so long. But, like, so many people dream of becoming a wrestler. He, we just happen to see his dream on television, mm-hmm. and people it, gave him a hard time about it. It goes across the board. If you're an athlete and you want to be an actor, people hate you. If you're an actor and you want to be a musician, people hate you. Like, yeah, like it's everywhere. And Do you know anyone who only has one thing that they like? Yeah, and if you're so to take weird. it in life that if someone works at an office and is like, I want to play music, like, oh, screw you. <laughs> yeah. Stick in an office. It's weird that we have this. Yeah. But I think we've all had it at some point in our yeah. lives yeah. that there's something – in some field that is precious to us, we go, no. Because, I mean, David Arquette. David Arquette was an actor in a movie, played a wrestling fan, turned wrestler, gets on WCW to promote this movie and promote what's going on, and they tell him, you will be the champion. And he's going, no, please. This is <laughs> right. a terrible he's idea. Like, I have respect for the business. Why are you doing this? And he loves it, but he goes through with it because they tell him it's going to be a great thing. It's going to happen. And he does it, and he garners hate for it. But it's the same thing. It's like he was put in that position, and of course he'd want to do it, and I'm sure in a tiny part of his brain, but there's hatred for that. It's very, very odd how that carries through. And also a lot of us are just raised in in a conservative fashion where it's like just pick one thing and just be good at that one thing. And when you decide to have outside interest – because I've I've seen it happen with with, – when I was a physical therapist at my hospital jobs, there were some employees – some fellow PTs at my hospital that held it against me that I would work a 10 hour shift and then bust my ass to get to a comedy show. They would, they would actually like look down at that. Like, Oh, you're, you're not trying to do physical therapy full time. You're doing that too. Like, why, why would you do that? And it's like, okay. Cause I have other dreams. Right. So there's people that just are not chasing their dream that will criticize you for chasing yours. And Keep that's kind of what chasing your dreams with. is what I always say. I think it's what <laughs> we say, say at every, the end of every show, Dale. every single time, every single show. Keep That's chasing right. your dream. Mine is models. Every time a model does something else, I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. There you're you go. Your runway <laughs> and your heels. <laughs> yeah, and mine's, mine's with acting. Like, I, I get upset when people come from other worlds. It's like, oh, because you're famous in that? You get to go be an actor? Ah, I didn't believe you in that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, but it, well, I, I just want to say to Mrs. Point, like, he, what he goes through now, it's he's building the reputation of WWE. He's building the reputation of wrestlers. And... Dwayne Johnson and John Cena are getting praise. And in part, they're good guys, and that's why. Mike Mizanin is a bad guy wrestling character, and he's not getting it. And right. it's starting to all just sort of unfold now, and I think that in part is kind of what comes through when he's talking about all this stuff. No doubt. Well, he's an A-lister, as is Maurice, so enjoy the interview. Come on! How you guys been? Come Good, on! Man. How's it going? Hanging in there? Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Enjoying yourselves? Yes. Yeah. Life. Wait, where do you want? Oh, you need it right here. Where? Yeah. Whatever you yeah. prefer. Did I just mess up your shot? Oh, You're good. Hello. Yeah, took us an hour right and a half, but we... Yeah, it's fine. fine. It works. Do you want me to sit close, or do you want to sit close to this Hi. young gentleman? Do you want me to sit, sit close yeah. to this young gentleman? Yeah. Oh, you guys are just friends now, huh? Oh, we're all friends here, aren't we? <laughs> He's friends with pretty much everybody. And um, years. Before you guys were even... Don't worry, miss. We go back. We are a thing. We go back. You and me. UPW days. UPW. UPW. Wow. We go back. We go so back. you're the one that actually knows that I actually did indies yes. for a little bit yeah, and I trained. Good. And I'm just a comedy buddy of Theo Vaughn, so we've actually met a couple. Ig- oh, yeah? I- ignore him if you want. Yeah. It's fine. I don't know either one of you, really. <laughs> That's not funny. I thought you were the joke guy. No, I'm just I'm you're speaking the, the truth. You're here for, for entertainment. Comedians and speak the truth, sir. Do they? Yeah. Do they? For okay. the most part. Okay. For the most part. Are we recording Theo yet? Can we just Theo get this done? Are we recording yet? Theo says is definitely the truth when he's. Oh on my God! Stage. Is he so Wait, full of the it? The way you say Jesus. that makes me think not. No. <laughs> <laughs> How's it starting? going? Yeah, win? let's start. Yeah, let's go. Already, let's just get going. Your own microphone? No, I gotta share. Oh, yeah, that is terrible, huh? I, I do this every time. Yeah, you guys don't have enough. We've been recording for a half hour, like waiting. Twenty bucks. This is all oh, you I can't want. afford. You can't afford another microphone. <laughs> it is so very ice cream coney. Yeah, don't lick it though. I don't really advise. 
Welcome back, first of all. Fans would love it. <laughs> yes, you don't want that See, out that there. that was your spot. That was where you're supposed to be. You're the comedian, no, no, and you're supposed I, to be like, yeah, but the fans would love it. But it I let come that on. moment hey, open for you. Comic, since you're standing comic, I told this to Dolph Ziggler, okay? Oh, and sorry for taking over your thing. Oh, please. So I have this thing that I want to do in stand-up comedy, because Dolph, I would always go watch him do his stand-up, and I would be like, man, you know, you need, like, that thing that like get her done or some oh, sort no. of thing. So I want to do catchphrase. I want to go up. Not a catchphrase. It's just I say a joke, and after every joke, I go, "Come on!" Actually, you I see I, you smile. I know a comic smi- who kind of does that. Uh oh, he's not good. It's Gimmick okay. infringement. He, he stole my stuff. He doesn't do it all the time, but like he's one of those like high energy. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. It's we have five more. I broke he's not one even of those here for five guys minutes. Always the on to where if you talk to him off stage, you'd want to kill him. But like he'll do one of those punchlines, and be like, "Come on, guys!" And no, like, yeah, sometimes, sometimes that, that exact thing. But you can use it, and no, no one knows who he is. That's my thing. I did it on TV. I did it already. I, I on did TV. see it on TV. Right. So I did use see it. That. Yeah, that's my point. You're saying someone else has my stuff, so they're like, "I'm not saying stealing my stuff." He doesn't do so it as well. I'm he's so a smart. short, I'm stubby. I'm like the Louis C.K. Right? That's what you're saying. He's short and stubby. Thanks, it doesn't man. matter. It's okay. Yeah. Anyway, oh boy! So, so first all question. This for this. So back yeah. to your wife. For a come on, I was talking you were to, talking to Maurice really? in the Sorry. first place. Thank you. You're so loud. How is it? She has to live with me, poor girl. How is it to be back? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Do you need more grooming done? I, I can help by the, this by side. By the way, you know, I, I I don't feel like a WWE superstar right now. You know, I feel like my mom being like. Look at you, Michael. Yeah. You got Look spaghetti you. sauce. That's, 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 Who dressed that's, you? See, I'm giving you all this material, and you're not taking it. What am I supposed to take with that? You're talking I, about I, her. I'm doing. I'm the comedy okay. here. It's I'm okay. doing all this. I'm doing all the bits. Yeah. It's you know, okay. You're supposed to be the comedy okay. complete. Go ahead, babe. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Can, can we not make me look like I'm a 12 year old? Can, can we can we make me look like I'm a WWE superstar? And I'm a fighting man, and I'm I'm, I'm tough so and I'm hot. rugged. By the way, I saw him. You in got a, a nice I saw watch. The Marine Five last night. Oh, how was it? He's yeah. so hot. We're putting over your movie. Hold on. Okay. So hot. Yeah. yeah. So I hot mean, in the Marine Five. Great. Performance was great, but he's so hot. How many Marines? Better than Rocky. Five. Way, I, I, went, I went to her. I go. So what do you think? She goes. You look hot. You don't like as much as, as much as you want. Someone to say that you don't want them to, like it's it like it's nice. It's a nice compliment, yeah. but it's almost like you know, okay, you're, you're okay. hot. But for it's a ex- movie. For example, Tom Cruise in Top Gun. Okay, yep. Yep. you're gonna tell me that the performance is that it's great. He's a great actor, but if you ask any woman on earth, they're gonna go, "Oh yeah, Top Gun, Tom Cruise." Then they yeah. find out he's five foot four. They're like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> How tall are you? Six foot. Oh, you are? Are you? Yeah, really? look that tall. Oh, I'm sitting down you're right sitting, now. I know, I'm but sitting, you're sitting you know down. What? I look, I'm at, sitting. I look at your hunchy. seat. You're a huncher. I a am. Hunter. I okay. I'm just trying to, you know. You look tall. Yeah. We look tall. You look like you're like 5'4". Well, congrats on Marine 5. Thank you. Uh, earlier reviews are in. Better than Rocky 5. That's a good thing. Thank you. Is that your joke? No, it's not a joke. That's the one he's got. Not a joke. It's not a joke at all. I'm just saying. You pay this guy for jokes? No, we don't pay him. Oh, no, I don't pay him at all. Not for jokes. I'm here out of love. Oh, can we get back to Maurice again? Lord. Lord. What's okay? So he doesn't even want the microphone <laughs> anymore. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't want the microphone anymore. He's, He's like, like I'm done mic. with my jokes. I'm done with my jokes. Total, total divas. Yes. And now you're headed back to the ring. Yes. What kind of year? It seems so crazy. I know it's crazy, right? It's, it was a hefty break there. <laughs> I was like, what is going on? <laughs> I mean, I came back last year. If you remember, this uh, Monday night after WrestleMania was a pretty big night. Oh yeah, for myself and my husband. Not, not um, the best for Zack Ryder, I guess. Not the best. Poor kid. Poor we kid. We don't care about Zack. Or his dad. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> not that cowboy hat right off his head. I saw him in the hotel earlier this week, and uh, he just walked away from me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy, but you know. Um, but are you liking it? I love back? it. No, I love it. And then this weekend on, on Sunday, we have what I would say the biggest moment of my entire career. Besides winning, you know, my two Divas Championship, this has to be the biggest. I, I'm with my husband in the on the biggest stage, biggest night. I mean, you would have asked me five years ago if I would have laughed in your face. Yeah. You know, it's it just seems so surreal. So it's going down. We're going to need some pictures for the foyer and, the, you know. The living room. It's gonna be amazing because, like, like I'm main event of WrestleMania, but this is the one I think I'm looking forward to the most because I get to actually be on the grandest stage of them all with the woman I love, like literally working together. I think I think this is the first time that we've been in the ring 
in a stage, in a ring where we're we're wrestling together as yeah. a team. So now you see the chemistry that we've had for the past year where, you know, we're, we're together. But now you can see us inside the ring wrestling, doing what we love to do. So it's going to be incredible. And, and bring and, a lot uh, of chemistry to that match because obviously the uh, – the other side will not bring any. So, um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and maybe you can remember this match. I like, I like that. Now, now, now he's got the, yeah. <laughs> you right. All right. You right. right. Complete agreement. Yeah. I was just about to say Total Bella's BS was genius and very, very entertaining. Yeah, that looked like That's, a ton of fun. That w how was that fun to shoot that entire day? It was great day? because that it go was by fast? mainly improv. We yeah. didn't really have, an, um, you know, any, any script. But, I mean, it, it's been, it's so easy. You know, <laughs> it's just so easy. They were like, will you tour the house as John Cena and Nikki Bella? I go, yes. Oh, my no God. No problem. And I, I, all you have to do is, like, watch watch one episode of Total Bellas, and you can literally get an in, in, improv. You can improv the whole thing. How like, much is on the cutting room floor? Like, how huh? much footage is oh there my, that you we, just there went? There is so much. I mean, we went to every room. We <laughs> we would do. I mean, there were things that I was crying. Like, she would do faces. And I'd be doing the scene, and I'd be like, blah, 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 blah. And I'd look at her, and I'd just start laughing. I'd be like Jimmy Fallon on SNL. You know what I mean? Just start cracking up just because it's so funny. And I'd be like, oh, i got to take another take. And it's like, do another one. And then she'd do another face. And I'd be like, because if you watch it, like, the person that steals the show is her. Absolutely. Right from the start when she goes, but you know what? I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right? Hey, we're talking. It could be its own network show, like just the spinoff of that. <laughs> could be its own show. It could. They, you know, I was actually nervous. So we did. We shot them all, and we uh, we did two the the one week, and then we knew it the week this week was uh, or last Tuesday was going to be the next two. The thing was, I was like, everyone was so excited about the first two. I was like, oh man, you know, when people get ex that now they expect right. something right. big, something. And I'm like, it. I know this is good. But is it going to be able, if people are going to be like, oh, they're just rehashing the same joke, or they're doing this, or doing that. So I was a little nervous. But then when Daniel Bryan hit the scene, oh my God. the place erupted, I went, we're good. We're good. We're in. We're in. My yes, juice box. Yes, yes. <laughs> I didn't I'm think that was the funny part, though, but everyone says talks about the juice box. <laughs> I love like, it. I thought the funny part was him walking in and, you know. With the phone book. Oh, uh, my God. <laughs> yeah. But we were crying laughing at just how stupid. All like, those faces we were, that, that I, I was doing, I was trying to not laugh. We were, we were it's, like, it's like, you getting confused between being Brie and Nikki. <laughs> like the, the direction that they would give would be like, you know, action, and then to be like, just come through the door and come up to the uh, come up to the the, the, the table that the, Nikki and Brie are at. Uh -huh. So I was like, okay, how would John Cena come through a door? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then I'd be like, <laughs> yeah. here we go. And that, I, I love the fact that I ran two steps. I don't know if you watch. Like, that's like one of my favorite. One of my favorite awesome. parts is literally like doing this and looking at the camera, go saying something, and then running two steps. <laughs> I don't know why it cracks me up every time. Um, is this is this your favorite year so far? Oh, I yeah. mean, you've just had such a ride I'm already. With her every day, so Aww, working with your romantic. wife, yeah. the talking smack moments that you've had. Yeah, with, with you Daniel made Bryan. that show. That you, well, you, that show that platform is so almost easy for me because it's it's kind of like this right it's like we're just talking there's no fan there's not one fan in the audience trying to crack you like there's always right, a heck like right, you know right, you get hecklers right. right and it's fine to have hecklers it's have you good had a heckler yet but, today <laughs> yeah just one yeah so it, it's it's like you'll hear that like if, if an audience starts doing it and the whole audience starts doing a thing i can play with that right. but if there's one guy that audience at home is not going to hear that one guy, but I hear him, yeah. and I'm trying to get something uh, relayed across, and I can just hear this this jerk just trying to ruin it for everybody else, but he's think he's thinks he's funny and thinks he's entertaining and thinks someone's going to see him or something like that. So, so when Trump, you're on probably. Talking Smack, <laughs> there's nothing like that. It's like we're in a we're in a setting, and I remember I was so angry that uh, there was there was a promo a long time ago that I was really angry. With Daniel Bryan? Yes. Yeah. Did you know his remark was coming? Because your response was just fire. Livid. Okay. So here's my day. So you have to go back to the entire day. Right? You guys are getting exclusive here. I don't think I've ever told this. Nice. So here's the day. So the day was kind of like this. I, I hear what the show is it's for SmackDown Live. I wasn't on it. I'm the Intercontinental Champion. But they're bringing back, they're bringing a, a tag team title and a women's title. And they've already had the WWE title, but 
there's no showcase of the Intercontinental title. I keep telling everyone every time, like I was like to the, the creative team, to everyone, I was like, this is the title that I've loved since I was a child. Like all my favorite superstars had this title and now I have it. And you're, it, it, and I don't want to be the guy again that sits there and goes, oh, I'm going to make it the greatest. Oh, I'm going to make it the greatest. Cause everyone does that. I want to be that guy. I want to do it. And they were like, well, you know, we don't have time on the show for it. And I go, I go, Put me on Talking Smack. And they go, well, what are you going to do? I go, I'm going to cut it. I'm, I'm going to rip into Daniel Bryan. And so, and so then once I started ripping into Daniel Bryan, I kind of, I guess I kind of went overboard. I, I guess you can say. But then I, uh, I was just like, when I, when I go, I have no filter. It's just, it's just everything that's fueling inside of me and anything that anyone's ever said to me and everything, I lay it on that other person. Just, it's just a wrath. And I just go black. I have no idea what I'm saying. Like, sometimes she'll go, do you even know what you just said? And I go, no, I just went black. But to your credit, though, that was the moment where everyone started saying, oh, my God, talking smack is must-see. Not to use your yeah. quote, but everyone has to watch that now. But not only that, but Daniel Bryan left. And I didn't expect him to leave. I expected him to hit me. To be honest, I, I, I didn't I didn't know what he was going to do because the things I was laying into him on were very below the belt and very mean and very rude. And yeah. just but it's just when I go, I just go. I just can't I can't hold it back. I, I don't, to be fair, he was below the belt on you, though. Yes. Like, especially so, especially when he like he called me like I, I fight weak or I fight like a coward. Like yeah. f- coming from him, like are you like the things that he was he was jabbing at me? It was like someone's taking a jab and it's like. You want to go home throw haymakers. You know the what I mean? One I thought that really, that I know probably really got you is when he goes, oh, yeah, when me and all my friends in the independent scene would talk about the typical WWE soft wrestler, your name is the first one that came out. Like, that's a, that's a, that's a dig. Yeah, and, and, and it's a dig, why, it's a dig not only from him, but it's from all the, the little fans on the Internet and all that mm. stuff. That, and I read all that stuff because it fuels me. It gives me that fire. And so when I started going in on him and he said that, it was like, wait a second. I'm the guy that's always here doing everything. The stuff that you don't want to do or, or John doesn't want to do or this guy, this guy, this guy. They give it to me. And, and then I'm here each and every I don't get injured. So how is that wrong compared to you who is sitting here who can't do anything, who can't wrestle anymore because of the way you wrestled? So I went off of him. He left. I didn't, I didn't realize he was going to leave. And I was like, uh, uh, I'm, still, I'm still fueling. I'm still angry. And I was like, I was like shaking. And, 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 she's yeah. sh- and she's sitting there. And I was, I, I, God, I, I, w- I, I, don't, I don't know what happened. But I, just, I went to a camera and I just started saying whatever came to my mind. And even people were like, God, that was such a great promo. I look at it back and I go, I couldn't even speak. Like I was so, you ever get so angry that you just, you lose yeah. your words. And I get like that a lot. And I hate it. I want to be crisp, clean, concise. Yeah, but that's, but it's, that's what's good because it's know, for real. Yeah. You know? It could but be I one of these back. WWE Snickers commercials now. That's what, you know, yeah. we created. But, I mean, but you know what I mean? Like, do you guys ever, like, have, like, oh, I messed up that word. Yeah. You know, I yeah. hate when you stutter a word and it ruins it. And you feel like it ruins it. Like a joke. If you, if you tell a joke and you stutter a word and you're like, ah, oh, nobody else notices it. But you're just like, and then in the back of your head, you're going, I stuttered, I stuttered, I stuttered, I stuttered. You know, I don't like doing that. I like everything to be clear, crisp and clean. But I don't get like that because I get so angry. <laughs> well, that's why we like it. Thanks. <laughs> well, we got to cut this out, but yeah. uh, congratulations. Well, it's so glad to see you back. on the exclusive. Wow, right? <laughs> <laughs> then again, I was You're just welcome. like, don't start doing the same. Don't get back in that mood. <laughs> I was just like, guys. Don't wind them up. Guys. By the way, <laughs> you guys are fans, right? So Tuesday on SmackDown, when John Cena was – cutting a promo for 10 minutes did you believe everything he said i thought it was a good promo for him i it was I, no he, everyone's been, everyone's been saying it's a great promo one of john cena's best but the words that he was saying like people were like why didn't you say anything back and i'm like because he was digging a hole and you guys were believing everything he said saying that like her on the wwe network you, you'll see zero you oh. kidding? Yeah, if you go, if you if you type Marie's right now, you'll see twenty matches of me kicking uh, Nikki Bella's butt. But not only like, that, I mean, but not only that, you're like, the longest the champ of the Divas yeah. Like he was talking about all this Divas Revolution. It starts somewhere, and it didn't start with this whole right now. It's all the women about previous. So everything he was saying was so just, everything you know, he said to me though when he said you haven't done Jack. That's a word he used, right? Yeah. Basically, just scrapped on every woman I've worked with Absolutely. because an entire division of a generation of women that were fighting for something. You just crap on. One of them is getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. Yes. But, but not only that, it was like, 
wait a second, N- now are you doing that? But then you're saying, like, the reason she was back was because I wanted to be on Total Divas, and I was like, well, wait a second. If I wanted to be on a reality show, couldn't I go to MTV and be on the challenge? Yeah. So I'm like, you, okay. You that. skipped that and so, so So I'm sitting there looking at let him just going, okay, okay. And then, but the thing is, the fans are going nuts. The fans are believing. It's, it's amazing what he can do. And I think talk it was about the, the women's revolution yes. when the woman that he's with is in the ring not speaking. He has to fight the battle for her because she can't fight it. That just shows you how I don't care if he can pick up a 200. We can all do that, but... And the like, early the early aughts gen that you're talking about gets shit on a lot, I feel. And there was so many yeah. like yourself and there's and Melina, there's so many com- I just big feel bad for all those because I got a lot of those women coming back and, and saying, Wow, Maurice, this was like this was just a punch in the face for all of us. Especially from him too. I think You know, it's uh it's, women's revolution, it it's just it doesn't happen overnight. This was years and years. Yes, we had twenty minute matches and live events, but we get we're giving two minutes on television. How can you relate and do something when you're given two minutes? Now they have better opportunities, and it's great. They're taking advantage of it, and they're doing great. But this was a fight we were fighting for yeah. way before. Yeah. And you I'm know, just, I'm just going to be honest, too. When it comes to this match at WrestleMania, it is so great, and everyone's so invested. It's been 80% both of you. Yeah. Let's be honest. Like yeah. Everything you're, be, well, you're well, doing every is, single week. It's going to be a lot of us on Sunday, too. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, The thing is, we have no idea what's going to happen. It's going to be, there's, like, yeah, it's going to be, it, it's going to be interesting. Like, we don't talk. We don't, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's my. It's a, different, it's a different entity. So you guys are going to be witnessing something, I guess, very real. <laughs> I'm excited for it. We've talked about it being our most anticipated match for quite some time. Oh, wow. So, Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Well, <laughs> thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for Keep your time. That comedy coming, man. Man, you were on fire One day today. he'll be funny. Who knows? <laughs> Thank you so much to Miz and Maurice for joining us. Always gold when you get to hang out with them. So, guys, we have the shakeup Monday night on Raw. We don't know exactly what that means. Maybe it's trades. Maybe it's drafting people. But hit us up over the weekend. Let us know what shakeups you would do. Make a couple of trades. Make it fun. So we're going to do a couple uh, here. Mine that I would do, if I'm going to do a straight-up one-for-one trade, I would trade AJ Styles to Raw and bring Samoa Joe over to SmackDown. That's a monster trade. Because think about it. Samoa Joe can challenge Randy Orton right away. AJ Styles maybe will either team up with Finn Balor or feud with Finn Balor. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's a lot of options there, I think. I like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Joe's just getting started, though. Um, I would get Sasha to SmackDown. Mm -hmm. And maybe if it had to be a trade, I would send Becky over to Raw. I can see that happening. Scotty, what say you? I would get Enzo to delete. Oh, Wait a second. Yes, you would. And then you let Cass hang around? Yeah, sure, why not? You really don't hate Cass that much. Uh, no, not that much. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, hit us up with whatever shakeups you think would be great. We are at Fox Compadres on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Fox Compadres. And, of course, hit us up the iTunes page. Give us a five-star rating and a review, and we'll be reading them on the show. Dale, put yourself over. I am The Walking Dale on Instagram and Twitter. Scotty Narver. You can find me on social media at Scott Narver, and there's a lot of good stuff on there. And if you bring a beach ball near me, I will destroy it. He will delete it. I am at Jay Quasto Brea Improv, April 26th, recording my new comedy album. Please come and see me. And this weekend, Ice House Comedy Club with my buddy Brad Williams. Go to jlocomedy.com for all the good stuff. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Miz and Maurice, and thank you for joining us throughout this entire WrestleMania week. We have so many more great interviews coming up. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We love you. We'll see you next week. Keep Keep chasing chasing your dreams. dreams.